I've been studying low-level resistance measurements and Keithley's book, free book actually, that's been mentioned on the EV blog uh, forum many times is definitely a must read for this uh, in general. Just the wealth of information in here about uh, low level measurements and high level measurements of resistance and voltage and everything is just invaluable. So just passing on some of the things that I've learned here um, making uh, hopefully making some of the things that uh, were a little confusing to me initially a little clearer uh, to those who were as confused as I was. Um, also, how to use a meter uh, that does not have offset compensated ohms uh, to do offset compensated ohms just by a little bit of uh, maneuvering with the probes and uh, zeroing and relative. So let's dive in here. Um, four wire ohms measurement versus two wire. What does that mean? Uh, two wire. If we look at the normal leads here, the two black uh, leads on the sides here, this would be normal two wire. And right now I'm set in two wire, so the meter is only looking at these. And it is sourcing current through these to the resistor and also sensing the voltage across there right at the terminals here. Problem with that is, is the resistance of the leads is included in that measurement because it's measuring back here at the meter. So that only comes into play or becomes um, important when you're talking about low level measurements because typically the lead resistances are small. But when you get down into you know, uh, 10 ohms or less or you're out for, for real precision, all of a sudden that lead resistance matters. So that's cured by doing a four wire measurement where we switch to four wire here and now the meter is sourcing current only through these two jacks and it's sensing current this now these two jacks are the actual voltmeter that is measuring the voltage drop across the resistor so that's what uh, is also called a Kelvin connection where the current is supplied to the device separately from the voltage so now the voltage is being measured independently and, and the voltage is being measured at a very high impedance so the leads are basically insignificant um, and you get a much higher accuracy measurement. So this is a 2.7 ohm uh, carbon resistor and if we look at it in uh, four wire where we're actually doing a four wire Kelvin connection we've got 2.720. Oh. Now watch what happens when I switch to Two wire we're going to see the lead resistances added in we jumped up to 2778 and we go back again you'll see that now we're back to the more accurate measurement now there are more things involved in a measurement down at this level than just that lead resistance um, and that is the thermoelectric effects of the thermoelectric EMFs which basically means um, you've got a thermocouple everywhere where you have two dissimilar metals uh, coming together. And if there's a temperature gradient uh, between those, it'll generate a voltage. Um, everybody pretty much knows what a thermocouple does. And basically every circuit, uh, when we get down to very low levels, um, it has a bunch of uh, thermocouples that are adding or subtracting to each other through the whole circuit and have to be considered. Why is that important at low uh, resistance measurements? Because you're starting to measure down into the microvolt range of voltages and thermoelectric EMFs are in many microvolts of, of uh, voltage generated. So that's why it becomes a, an issue at these levels. So offset compensated ohms. What does a meter that has that feature do. It basically disconnects the current from the uh, device, takes a reading of the voltage across the device, which we see here. This is obviously voltage being converted into ohms because we're in ohms mode, but it's still a voltage measurement that we're seeing um, on the meter keeps that, records what that is, then it supplies the current 
okay, and we get our reading, but it knows to subtract out the original thermal EMF that was generated so that we're reading just the voltage drop of the resistor, not the voltage drop of the resistor plus the thermal EMFs. So it does that automatically and just cyclically uh, current off, measure the, the thermal EMF, uh, measure it with current on, subtract, subtract out the thermal EMF, and it does that on a continuous basis. So how can we use a meter that doesn't have offset compensated ohms to do the same thing? Well, we can do just what we saw here. We disconnect the meter, but in the, disconnect the current, but in this case now we go and we zero the meter out so we have just zeroed out the thermal EMFs that are there and now we can go ahead and connect and now we see what the actual reading is without the thermal EMFs now one catch is that when you have this situation because of how most meters are wired internally um, we have to consider the um, fact that there's a bleed path for the um, current if we, all we do is un disconnect the one lead. So if we look here, we've got source and sense on the meter, low source, low sense. All right. And if all we do is disconnect the high source from the uh, resistor, there's a bleed path for this current to go through this internal resistor that's in the, in the meter. There's an internal, uh, like typically something like a 100K or whatever, resistor between these to bleed between these. So there's a current path through this to go down through, through the resistor and back to here if we just disconnect it. So what we, we actually have to do is we have to take this um, high source lead and short it to the low source lead so that it definitely does not send any current through the meter. So ideally, what we want to do, even though I don't see a whole huge difference in readings between doing it the two different ways on the meter here, I need to come over here and um, connect to this end to short the current source when I do my zero. So I'll zero to get out of math mode and then zero again now I know that there's no current whatsoever going through the device under test. I'm getting a good zero on the um, just the thermal EMS. Then I come over and take my measurement, and now I've got a good solid measurement that the thermal EMS have been removed. Um, there's other things involved with this, um, like the fact that we're sending current through this device. The device is warming because of the current going through it and the, the resistance is going to change because of that and um, that's that's another topic but um, basically that's what we're doing here and um, I'm just gonna make a uh, set of Kelvin probes that have a switch so that instead of me having to do this lead switching um, if I'm using Kelvin clips um, I can do it um, using Kelvin clips because Kelvin clips you can't disconnect these independently. I'm just showing you this with four independent leads, um, how that connection would happen. But if we're using our typical Kelvin clip, where yes, the source and sense are separated, but the process of zeroing and having one disconnected and moving one over to um, short out the current source, uh, can't do that with the Kelvin clip connected. So I'm going to make a uh, connector box to go on the meter that will allow a switch that will automatically do that switching where I can just click on the switch, zero the meter, and let off the switch and it'll be back in the measure uh, configuration and allow me to do offset compensated ohms on this. Um, I would think that this would work on any um, higher end uh, meter that has four wire uh, ohms and um, you know, you Hewlett Packard or whatever, and most um, companies have higher end meters that do include offset compensated ohms, but typically they're the higher dollar uh, meters, and um, I don't know why they don't just include it on all of them all the time, but um, and it's a relatively simple thing. But um, so we're going to take a look at that, and I'll show some uh, sequences of, of building the actual box and go from there. One of the things that uh, you might say, well, how significant are these thermal EMFs? 
I mean, uh, you know, what's the big deal? So let's just take this off so that we're just measuring voltage now. And we will zero it out again. All right. And you'll see that it's relatively stable. It's bobbling a few digits. But now I'm just going to put my finger on this end. See the display climbing? Okay, I'm going to take my finger off. And you'll see it dropping. Okay? That has nothing to do with resistance. That's not the, the temperature resistance, resistive temperature coefficient of the resistor. That is the thermocouple that is between the gold uh, contact of the Pomona clip there and the tin uh, coating on the res uh, resistor lead. That thermocouple, we are seeing its effects right there as we go for I jump it up. If I bring a soldering iron over there and just get it near there, you'll see that it go crazy, but this, this obviously proves the point very well. Um, totally independent of the resistor temperature coefficient. Another thing we might look at is we say, okay, um, you know, the Kelvin connection and all that. What's the, what's the, um, you know, how sense, how careful do we have to be with these things? Let's just take a look at, at where I've connected the leads now. I've got these way far away from the resistor, not typical of what this thing would be in circuit. So just for the fun of it, let's zero this now in this configuration. And watch what happens just when I move the lead closer to the component. Uh, we just gained almost one and a half uh, mil ohms. And if I move this one over, uh, we're up to 2.7 .7 mil ohms. So you can see that down at this level, we're actually measuring very, very low, which we're trying to do, measuring very, very low resistances. And everything matters as far as distances and, and what's going on there. Um, just another note um, that should be obvious, but just for, for the, uh, as Dave would say, the young players, um, you notice that the current is outside of the, um, of the voltage measurement. So the red leads are the voltage measurement of the current. These have to be on the outside of this. If I come in here, I've got garbage. Okay, I've basically just eliminated my voltage reading because I've brought my current source over here. It's got to be where the current's going through, and actually that current could be anywhere as far away as, as you want because the current's not going to change, but the voltage measurement leads always have to be internal to, you know, towards the device under test between the, uh, in between the current sources. So here we have the resistor set up. We're going to zero it out. Now we're going to look at the temperature coefficient of the of the resistor. Now you see the bringing the soldering iron close to that. We see that climbing. Now that is caused by the temperature coefficient of the resistor, separate from the thermal uh, or thermoelectric EMFs generated by the contacts getting there. So you can see there we had an immediate response from the heat of the, of the um, uh, soldering iron getting close to the resistor. And we're showing that that's an independent uh, effect from the uh, growth that we had from the thermal EMFs alone. So as that cools down, as I cool that thing down a little bit, um, now watch what happens with just the thermal e thermoelectric EMFs just bringing the solder iron close to the contact here. I'm not touching it, I'm just getting close. You can see the growth there just from the thermoelectric effects there. And you'll see it drop back down again as it cools. So just uh, hammering home the point of the separateness of the thermoelectric EMS versus the um, temperature resistive coefficient of the resistor. Another way of eliminating therm uh, thermoelectric EMFs from uh, resistance measurement is to reverse the current direction. Um, take uh, the first reading current one way, second reading current the other way, and uh, take the um, uh, average of those two. So um, this is one that I've, I've made that basically just switches the current 
from one direction to the other so that you don't have to change your leads. You can just flick the switch while it's engaged. So this would plug into the current side. My other two leads would, uh, for my Kelvin clips would pl plug into the sense side and of course connect, they're connected to the Kelvin clips. The only thing about this is is that now this requires you to write down two numbers and uh, do the math to get your reading. Whereas the offset compensated ohms, um, I've got a reading instantly that doesn't require any math and doesn't have any uh, chance for math errors or whatever and is a lot faster. So even though this is just as effective, the current reversal, current reversal works because the um, uh, thermoelectric EMFs reverse when the current's reversed. So you get those uh, two opposite readings when you average those out, they cancel, and it cancels just the thermoelectric part of the reading. So just a, uh, another note on the, on the low uh, resistance measurement aspects. So that's why I'm pursuing the offset compensated ohms um, and uh, using that value. So to make this uh, switch box that I'm talking about, is I want something that I can just plug right into the uh, face of the meter all at once with all four leads. So I have the um, banana plugs that I can mount in this. I put them on the three quarter or 19 millimeter spacing so that they jive with the meter. Uh, those will go in. And then I will incorporate a push button. And the push button will provide the switching to switch the lead to short the current source so it does not go through the device under test or send it out through the uh, the um, wire to the uh, device under test. So this will just be a, a switch push button switch here that when you push this it's going to short this and that's when you do your zeroing on your or your relative on your ohms and then um, when you let off it connects this back and you've got your regular measurement direction. So uh, we're just going to make some connections here, drill some holes, and um, go from there. As close as the nuts are to the bosses for the screw heads in this, I'm going to need to actually turn the hex on the banana plug itself and let the nut stay still. So because of that, I'm going to use a stainless uh, washer under this. Um, it'll actually improve the, the uh, whole situation, but if I didn't, those, the hex on there would chew the plastic up as I go to tighten it, and uh, that wouldn't be a good situation. So I'm just going to use a stainless washer there. We're also going to uh, thin this end down and kind of put a solder tab to kind of effect on it so that we can quickly get heat into this to solder onto these without melting the plastic. I'm machining the threads off of part of this for where it sticks out and I'm going to smash it to make it a uh, uh, like a turret type uh, connection. This is set up for drilling the holes through there for the wires to go in. One of them requires two holes for the wires and the others just require one. Here was drilling the holes for the uh, silicone leads to come in from the Kelvin clips. And I've spaced those such that the lip of the case, when the lip of the case comes in, it's actually going to grab the wire, compress the wire to form sort of a strain relief on those as the uh, case closes. 
Here's the box with the silicone leads pulled through. And they're actually kind of a press fit in there. They'd be stretched in. And then I have a little notch ground right there into the uh, silicone outer shell, not just down to the white inner shell that um, matches up with the lip on the case. So when the uh, case um, piece goes in like this and engages, it actually latches into that notch in the silicone to keep it from, from being pulled out. Not bulletproof, but uh, plenty good enough for uh, careful lab use. Here's the back plate with the banana jacks all tightened and the brass pieces modified and ready to go. I've ground the uh, outer colored insulation off of the leads for where it's inside the case so that it's easier to maneuver and uh, work with in the inside and obviously we're working with very low voltages here in currents so the extreme insulation resistance of the full casing isn't required so no harm in uh, removing the insulation like this to make it easier to work with. Okay here it is all put together uh, other than being closed up, we have the switch um, in place, all our banana jacks are in place, we have the wires engaged, and um, we have everything soldered in place. We have the low sense, the high sense, the high um, source the low source and then the low source is uh, or excuse me the high source is actually switched between being shorted to the low source uh, for when we zero it or connected to the uh, high source um, as normal measure mode so everything's put in so that it clears when we cover the close the cover and our little notch there for the uh, end of the insulation is there to grab the, the wires um, I'm gonna put a little um, uh, instant glue around the silicone just to get a little grip uh, a little more grip around those some wicking um, uh, cyanoac cyanoacrylate uh, glue um, around those uh, just to help belt and suspenders there on, on uh, keeping the wires from pulling out you'd have to tug on them pretty hard and pretty straight to have them come out and we'll button this up and then we'll see how it works okay so here's our box mounted switches on top you can grab with your fingers so you're not loading the banana jacks in the meter and right now we're looking at it um, we'll zero this out not zero it out we're just in normal mode we're 2.72135 ohms um, and we can now press this now we see what our thermal EMS are we're internally shorting the high source to the low source so that no currents going through the uh, resistor and the voltage leads are measuring the voltage uh, which is purely uh, thermal EMFs and obviously whatever error there is in the meter zero uh, are offset so right now we can just zero this to zero out our um, thermal EMFs release the switch now we read our direct ohms reading um, with the uh, thermal EMFs removed Another thing this, this can be used for is when you want to minimize the length of time that the current's being sent through the resistor so you're not changing its, the resistor's temperature, is we can actually hold the switch which kills the current through the, through the leads, connect up so that we're reading our thermal EMFs, let it settle out, zero it out, then we can just let the switch up long enough to take a reading. 2.72143, boom, that's it. And we can use that as a means to shut the current on and off without disconnecting the leads and um, see what's going on there.